I Wanna Know is the biggest Arctic Monkeys song with over 1 billion views on YouTube and recently passing 2 billion streams on Spotify. I'm just learning about that. I didn't know. Yeah. The song came out at a crucial moment in the band's career. Yeah, I guess this one doesn't have the obvious, so to speak, single that the early album had, especially the first one, you know? Yeah, I fucking forgot how to do that. I don't know how you do that anymore. <laughs> Some people, your first album was, the, you know, the hit record, whatever. Mm -hmm. And then came another album and another album. And, but then a couple of, you know, critics came over and said, hmm, I don't know what they're doing now. But Do I Wanna Know led to AM, which catapulted the band Skywards and became their most successful album to date. Yeah, the song is kind of a sequel to Are You Mine in the sense that it's... Upon writing that tune, we discovered that there was this something like the other side of that door. Then we did this song, the first song on the record, Do I Wanna Know, I suppose, was when that idea then went to like the next phase and the rest of the record really is just exploring that. Crawling back to you We got into a rehearsal space, or the studio, and we were all kind of set up in the kind of, I guess, like this. And um, it just didn't feel right. There was something mm. about it. We kind of weren't really getting anywhere. And so I, got, I suppose we got the four track recorder out to see if we could get, Did go a like different route. I want it to sound good in the car, the way that like 50 Cent in the club does. Your drums have never sounded like this before, so uh, what was different about your approach this time? Um, just due to the like fact that we were recording on this machine, it meant like playing a bit quieter okay. and like simplifying things. The rhythm track for Do I Wanna Know was largely recorded in, in Joshua Tree. And I think that perhaps there's a bit of, bit of the desert in that husky drum sound there, I don't know. There's a guitar I bought on the, the record before this, on the last day in the studio, I got this 12-string guitar called a Vox Star Stream that um, is the, what I wrote the riff to Do I Wanna Know on. Like, I feel like that riff, or that song even, was like a ghost within the walls of this old guitar that I bought to some extent. I don't know, I'm, I'm quite into the idea that Old bits of equipment have songs built into them already or something like definitely like I wrote that tune the, that riff on that thing and it kind of just came out of it and it was like brought me along with it rather than the other way around have you got color in your cheeks do you ever get that fear that you can't shift the type that sticks around like summits in your teeth Th this time a lot of the record came was built like from the ground up in the sense the the groove or like the rhythm section right. was recorded on this four track cassette recorder and I was writing lyrics and uh, melodies to to that. But yeah, we, we'd make demos on this machine and it took me to a place I wouldn't have gone to like on an acoustic guitar or sitting at a piano that I can't play. And I think that's kind of perhaps responsible for the way some of the melodies move around, like especially in the verses, it's like a conversation or something. There's not that too much repetition. Yeah. It walks around. I don't know. This kind of freestyle melody in the verses is unusual, and it's in contrast with the repetitive instruments. By the time we get to the chorus, the vocal melody follows the main riff, which the listener is already familiar with, making it like super catchy. The backing vocals play a key role in the song, with even the title being a part of them and never sung within the lead vocal. If this feeling flows both ways, it's to see it all. 
sort of hoping that you'd stay. And the, and the backing vocals do at times seem to respond to what the lead vocal is doing as well. It's a nice kind of call and response. Yeah, yeah we were just, it was all, well, that's where we put all the kind of complications now. Things were sort of stripped out downstairs and maybe complicated a little bit more upstairs with the vocal production. So much you're singing? I'm full of it. Yeah, a lot of singing, yeah. Uh, a lot of falsettos? Yeah, I know, I, did, I didn't realise that was in me. Uh, I used to just shout <laughs> as high as I could. Yeah? Then I just got over this brink of uh, into the world of falsetto. I don't know, it's got that kind of, <clears throat> almost this sort of contemporary R&B, like backing vocal. I'm kind of into this like operatic sort of scales that like some of them R&B girls like I don't know, from 10, 15 years ago would wander around. Let's like try and do that. I, just, I quite enjoy it in the studio. I like really, I become, I become somebody else. Oh, uh, like Mariah Carey or something like that. Oh my God, there's a Mariah Carey in you. Just, oh, yeah, exciting. who knew? Okay. Uh, R. Kelly mainly. I should have gone with a man probably with that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm not afraid. So have you got the good? Been wondering if your heart's still open and if so, I wanna know what time it should. I, I wanna close out with a song, Do I Wanna Know? Um, tell me about the song. Is there one particular person that sort of inspired or influenced, influenced this song? Person from the past, the present, the future? Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the fabulous answer. <laughs> Yeah. Lyrically, I think it's, in a way, it's sort of what the, I've never really sort of changed what I've written about. It's still, um, it's perhaps describing places or like party environments or, you know, you know that the still a lot about women, but perhaps it's just from a different part of the room or something, that those people or places are being observed. Like a different director. I suppose it's like a, it's my attempt at like, are you lonesome tonight? Or something. Uh, yeah, I could I see that. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Alex Turner also mentioned in an interview that initially, "Do I Want to Know" had lyrics that were later transferred to number one party anthem. I'm trying to apply what I would imagine the compositional perspective of like a hip hop or R and B producer you know, manipulating the instruments to make sounds that kind of become building blocks, like as if the way I'd imagine, like, they construct a beat for, like, a rap song. We can see this kind of layered approach with the instruments stacking up gradually, and during the song's climax, the chorus and the pre-chorus combine, creating a really cool effect. So the combination of the mega riff, the freeform vocals, the lyrics, all make for a killer song. Let me know in the comments what you think made this song so huge. I think the video clip also played a big role, expanding on the lines of the album's artwork. It is very pretty. You had just something to do with this artwork, right? That's true, yeah. I drew it on a tissue. Really? Oh yeah. Is this... I just assumed, I didn't even look into this, but I assumed that this had something to do with AM radio waves or something, maybe? That is an AM radio wave, yeah, yeah. I was yeah. right. That's right. That never happens. You can learn more about radio waves or electromagnetics in general with Brilliant, the best way to learn maths, computer science, or data science in a like engaging and interactive way. Brilliant customizes the courses based on your skill level so that you can go at your own pace depending on your past experience. For example, if you're into artificial intelligence, they've got this brand new large language models course that helps you to learn the behind the scenes of how something like ChatGPT works. Brilliant will help you to understand the fundamentals of algorithms, data, Python. It's a really fun platform to learn new stuff with thousands of lessons going from basic to advanced, and every month, new lessons are added. If any of these topics sound interesting to you, go to brilliant.org slash three minutes, or you can use the link in the description, and you'll get a free trial for 30 days. And if you're one of the first 200 people to use the link, you'll also get a discount of 20% of the annual premium subscription. Thank you so much to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.